Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Britt Strohecker at New Beginnings Church in Middletown, Pennsylvania. How are you guys doing today? Hopefully, you're doing well. I got off to a good start today, and I'm having a great day. So I want to get right into things here by looking at 1 John chapter 4 and starting at verse 16b. Let's read this here. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced God's perfect love. We love each other because he loved us first. If someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command. Those who love God must also love their fellow believers. This is an important passage of the Bible because it really defines who we are as Christians and it also defines the purpose for why we are here and our relationship with God. You see, God is defined as love. The very first words I have read from this passage are, God is love. Now, if God is love, he created us because he needed an object or a, someone to have a relationship with so that he can focus his love on somebody that he truly loves unconditionally. And that's each and every one of us. So the reason why we're here is, is God is love and he wanted to express his love to children that he created. And we are his children as long as we accept who he is and allow him to be part of our lives. So we are created to be the objects of God's love. That is why we are here. So God wants to have a personal relationship with each and every one of us. And we find out that all who live in love live in God. So if we are loving people and reflect God's love, we are living in God. It says later on down in this passage, uh, it says that, uh, I'm going to find it here. You know, we're not going to be afraid on the day of judgment. And why is that? Because if we live in God's love and reflects God's love, uh, we can face God with confidence. Why? Because it says here, because we live like Jesus here in this world. See, that is why God sent his son. One of the reasons why, of course, the main reason why was that so God could repair the broken relationship that existed between us when we gave in to our sins or when we are given to sin uh, or when we are sinners we need the precious blood of Jesus, his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection to overcome and conquer our sins and death that is the result of our sin. So we need Jesus for that primary purpose. But the secondary purpose for Jesus to be here was so that God could illustrate and set for us an example of what his love is all about. That's why we need to live like Jesus. Why? Because he was the example, the perfect example of God's perfect love. So you see, this whole relationship is established on love. And what did Jesus say are the two most important commandments? The first one, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That means love God with everything. 
That means be devoted to God in your love. And being devoted to God in your love means that you are obedient to what he tells you. You follow after the example that he has given you. You surrender your life and all the things in your life to God so that you can live for him and allow him to live through you and allow his love to shine through you to others that are around you. So that is the way that we love God. And the second commandment is like the first, but it's just as important. That means love one another. That was the second commandment. So if we are to be a reflection of God's love, we need to love one another. It says down here, if someone says, I love God. In other words, someone claims to be a child of God, but... And there's one of those transition words, those conjunctions that are so important in the Bible. It says, but it says here, if someone loves, or wait, let me get back here. If someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. You cannot say that you love God while you are practicing some sort of hatred to, towards other people. So if you say, I love God, but then continue hating somebody or hating a fellow believer, then you are lying. And who are you lying to? Not God. God can see through your lie, but you're lying to yourself. And friends, I got to tell you, there's a lot of believers, a lot of Christians running around out there who are in this category, in this boat. They are lying to themselves because they say they love God on one hand, but they practice some form of hatred on the other hand. And hatred comes in many forms. Uh, it could be conflict, quarreling, drama, gossip, you name it. I mean, anything that's a negative uh, situation that's a relationship breaker or is something that tears somebody else down, that is some form of hatred that makes us a liar if we say we love God, but we practice one of those forms of hatred. Um, for if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? So that's a good question. If we cannot show loving relationships here on earth, how can we have a loving relationship with God in our spiritual relationship? Because God wants that relationship with us. He's very, very uh, stern on this. He wants that personal relationship. And how do we know this? If you look at Exodus chapter 34, verse 14, it's that God says, you, were, you must worship no other gods for the Lord, whose very name is Jealous, is a God who is jealous about his relationship with you. In other words, God doesn't want you to put anything above or in the way or in the place or ahead of your relationship with him. That's how much he loves you. He wants to have that close personal relationship with you. He doesn't want to come in second place. He wants to be first in your life. And our priorities should be set up that way. God first, family second, everything else third. That is the way God has set things up in his holy word when it comes to our priorities. So those who love God must also love their fellow believers. That's love one another, the command that Jesus gave us. So here the Bible is explaining more. That's a phone. I don't have to answer. It's a different part of the uh, a different organization that's here in the building with us. But anyway, um, I digress, but I had to explain that because I don't want you guys thinking I'm ignoring any phone calls out there because I'm not. It's over on their side. So anyway, you know, here we have a deepened explanation of what Jesus was talking about. Love God with everything you are and then love one another. The two most important commandments. And why are those commandments there? Because God is love. And this is the kind of people he wants us to be. Loving people just like he is loving. And he's unconditionally loving. So we too must be unconditionally loving. So you know the song says they'll know that we are Christians by our love. That's where this song comes from this passage of scripture because that's the way we need to pursue our christian faith so until next time remember nothing in this world is more important than the love of jesus christ i'll talk to you soon